Many years ago, it was common for the great heroes or witty protagonists that star in many folk tales to be replaced by the then ruling monarch. This way, the stories would help the public perception of the current royals. In some ways, it was an early form of propaganda, a way of showing a nationalistic allegiance to the nobles of the land. So it is very much in this vein that we are greeted with the tale of King James IV and the Tower of Clato. A long time ago, in the land of Fife, there stood a castle known as the Tower of Clato. It was situated atop a ridge that overlooked the Vale of Eden, and beneath it lay a large dark cavern known as Clato Den. This cave was said to lead under the rock and cliff and connect to the Great Tower. The entrance to the den was by the side of a large public road, where recently many travellers and merchants had been brutally attacked and pulled into the cavern, never to reach their destination. The tower and the cave quickly gained a reputation for robbery and murder. The alleged perpetrators of these horrible crimes were Clan Seton of Clato, the rulers of both the lands and the tower. They were by no means a large family and only a minor branch of Clan Seton, but all in the surrounding area feared the robbers and bandits who dwelled within the cave. One day, news of the attacks and robberies would find its way to the court of King James IV of Scotland. The king was outraged and swiftly set about investigating the disconcerning news. He told his men that he wished to ride to Clato Den and determine the truth for himself. With all haste, Horses were prepared for his majesty, and a small party of trusted soldiers. By late afternoon, the royal procession had arrived at Clato Den. There, the king produced an old tattered travelling cloak, and threw it about himself. He gave strict instructions to his attendants, ordering them to let the king head to the cavern alone. And after some protest from his loyal men, the king would eventually head down the road towards the cave entrance looking very much the simple traveller. As the royal reached the cavern mouth, a young man in a black cloak and hood appeared from the darkness and called to his disguised sovereign, Dismount the horse and follow me if you want to live. And who are you to give orders? The king countered. The man gave no response. Instead, he drew a dull blade and grasped the bridle of the king's horse. But suddenly... In a flash of steel, the king severed the man's hand with a weapon he had concealed beneath the cloak. Instantly, the robber screamed and dashed back into the darkness, clutching his bloody arm. James bent forward and pried the severed limb from his bridle and rode swiftly back to his waiting men. The next day, King James, escorted by a large retinue of soldiers, would make an official visit to the Tower of Clato. He sent word to the Setons of Clato, telling them that he had heard good things about their family from many of the nobles at court, and wanted to meet them all, father and sons, to assess their suitability to hold public office. When James and his men arrived at the tower, the doors were flung open and the king was welcomed inside. There the small family clan had prepared a feast, and it was obvious to all that they hoped to gain favour with the king. But before the meal could begin, the king desired to meet every single member of the Setons of Clato. So one after the other, the sons of old Clato were presented to the king. Are these all your sons? inquired the king. All but one, sire. My youngest is very unwell, replied old Clato. I must see him straight away, demanded the king. Not wishing to upset the sovereign, old Clato reluctantly led King James to the bedside of his youngest son. There the king saw a young man, very pale of face, lying in bed, 
being tended by some serving maids. James reached forth and pulled the ill man's left hand from the covers and began to feel his pulse. His highness looked a little concerned before saying, I cannot find a good heartbeat here, give me your other hand. The young man instantly became a little more lively and told the king he felt better and that his help was not required, but thanked him all the same. I must see your right hand, pushed the king. If you are to take public office, how will you sign deeds and orders without a strong right hand? With a look of sorrow, the young man confessed to James that he had recently lost his right hand in battle. That is truly a shame, said the king, as a wry smile entered his face. But it so happens that I have a spare hand in my pocket. If it fits you, it is quite at your service. With this the king withdrew the severed hand and threw it upon the bed. The man, now utterly defeated, looked at the king. Aye, that is indeed my hand, and I'll wager it was your sovereign bridal it took hold of last night. James gave the young man a sombre nod, and then called for his men to seize every member of Clan Seton of Clato. That afternoon, the father, his wife, his sons and daughters were taken from the great tower, each and every one of them would be hung up on the nearest tree, and so ended the rule and the terror of Clan Seton of Clato. Once the bodies kicked no more, they were cut down, and the corpses were piled in Clato Den to rot, exposed to the elements. As the years went by, the great tower of Clato would meet very much the same fate, a powerful warning to all in the land not to cross King James or assault his people. Thank you for listening, and a special thank you to all my patrons who support the channel. Before I finish this video with some extra or tangential information I found, I would like to let you know that my Spreadshirt shop now has two new t-shirt designs. One is the new Yin and Yang Wolf logo, and the other is a beautiful art piece by Shoddy Shades, depicting the Kelpie. Now on to the extras. I could not find any historical reference to this tale. I looked throughout the whole life history of King James IV, and not once was this mentioned. So I have to conclude it was only a tale or story, which was possibly designed to be a warning about doing evil, and a vector to depict the king as a heroic and noble figure. This is of course only my opinion, and if you know of any sources on the subject, I would love to hear about them. The real clan Seton were actually very strong supporters of the Stuart crown, and would fight alongside King James on many occasions. In fact, it is said that George Seton, 5th Lord of Seton, was actually an incredibly close personal friend of the King, and both of them would die side by side as friends, fighting the English at the Battle of Flodden. So until next time, Slang Java.